الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله محمد وآله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا آمنوا بالله ورسوله والكتاب الذي نزل على رسوله صدق الله العظيم Alhamdulillah, we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all his bounties and favors which he has bestowed upon us. And we thank Allah for his guidance which he has given to us, guidance in the form of Islam. And this guidance which Allah has given to us in the form of Islam, by guiding our hearts to the right beliefs and by sending the Quran and causing us to believe in the Holy Quran, it is the greatest favor that Allah has bestowed upon us. And it is far superior and better than anything on the face of the earth. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself testifies to that. You know, sometimes a person doesn't know the value of something until he misses it, one, and until he experiences how valuable it is. So one day this whole world will come to an end and you and I will return to Allah. And we will go in a dark place called the grave. And you know in that grave, it is a whole world called Barzakh. Your father and mother wouldn't be there. Your cars wouldn't be there. Your business wouldn't be there. Your big brother wouldn't be there. And nothing you knew of this life will be there. And you know what will save you there? Your Iman in Allah. Only one thing will save you there. And that iman and faith you have in Allah will bring light in the grave. And that, that, that chamber will be illuminated. And that tight place that when we bury a person, we see that we are throwing dirt. And you know, if you pass after a few days, you will see the grave, it will cave down and it will sink. You know why that happens? Because the board that is on top, it breaks and it sinks and all the dirt goes in. And after a while, that grave top becomes flat because everything goes into and then that body becomes part of the dirt. And you know what the Prophet ﷺ tells us? Your belief in Allah and your good deeds that you do will cause your grave to open so wide it will be as far as your eyes can see. Allahu Akbar. And you know what the Quran says? Allah will send angels to you in the grave saying, نَحْنُ أَوْلِيَاءُكُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ O servant of Allah, your parents, your friends, your companions are not here. You are very lonely. You are scared. But you know what? We will be your friends from today until you enter Jannah. نَحْنُ أَوْلِيَاءُكُمْ We will be your friends. You would have new friends in the grave on account of what? Your Iman. At that time, the believer will understand the value and the worth of the Iman that he had on the face of the earth. This is the world of material. And it is the world of goods. It is the world of dollars and cents. Our hearts have been trained and our minds have been trained to recognize the value of only those things that can give us physical benefits. We have not been trained, neither have we trained ourselves to recognize the value of that which is invisible to our human eyes. So we put our hope on the physical things we have. We put our trust and reliance on the physical things we have. Yet it is Allah alone who is helping us day and night in the grave on the day of judgment. And he will take us to paradise, inshallah, what we dream of. So this very iman that we have which Allah has blessed us, and this Islam that we follow, indeed as Allah testifies in the Quran, there is nothing greater than that on the face of the earth. This is why in a very beautiful ayah, he says, Ya ayyuha nasu wa mankind, qad ja'atkum maw'idhatum min rabbikum, wa shifa'un lima fi sudur wa mankind, there has come to you an exhortation from Allah, there has come to you a reminder from Allah, and there has come to you something which is actually a healing for your hearts. 
a healing for your spiritual illness and for your physical illness, which is the Holy Quran. Then Allah says, Wahuda, and Allah has granted you, there has come from Allah guidance. There has come from Allah guidance. Warahmatu lil mu'mineen. And then there has come from Allah rahmat to the believers. The Quran is a rahmat, the Quran is guidance. Qul, Allah says to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, O Prophet, you tell the people, tell mankind, bifadlillahi wa bi rahmatihi fa bi thalika fal yafrahu, be happy and rejoice with this favor that has come from Allah. This favor that has come to you in the form of the Quran, this favor that Allah has given to you in the form of Islam, Allah says to the Prophet, tell them, rejoice with this favor. Be happy with this favor. Why? It is far better than everything they can gather on the face of the earth. You can accumulate things and wealth and properties and value us from the day you have arrived on the face of the earth until the, until the day you leave the earth, even if you have lived for 1,000 years. This hidayah and this guidance and this Quran that Allah has sent is far better than everything you could achieve and accumulate in this life. And this is what Allah is telling us. And this is the value of this iman. But we must know, my dear beloved brothers and sisters, what does this iman require us to do? You know, normally, normally, a person believes in Allah. If a person wants to accept Islam, he says, but I want to accept the, the Islam, I want to take the shahada. So he may come to you as a Muslim, or you may take him to somebody that you think that is better, who can give him the shahada, and he says, okay, say, I believe in Allah, there is no God but Allah, and I believe that the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, upon whom a peace is the final messenger, and you say, okay, now you're a Muslim. Is that all about Allah? Just to believe he is one? Okay, you are a Muslim because you have accepted what we call the shahada, but is there anything more than believing Allah is one? Think about it. How many people accept Islam and they don't know about Allah? How many people accept the shahada and the life that they conduct is the same way as before? They don't understand there is halal and haram in their life. They don't understand the concept of good and bad. There is, they can't understand what they have to do as a duty and what they cannot do. But they live on. But they have accepted the shahada. And shahada is, you believe, is to testify Allah is one. Is that all about Islam? Is that all about Allah? That Allah is one? No. That is not all. That is just the beginning. And what that tells the individual, that while many people may actually <clears throat> believe in more than one God, you have not chosen to do that. You have chosen to believe in one God. And that one God is who? He is Allah. The only one. Now, it is incumbent upon you to learn who this Allah is. And now truly believe in Allah. You have believed in the concept of one God. But what do you believe about this Allah? The Sahabas radiallahu ta'ala anhum believed in one God. That was the first step. But for 13 years in Makkah, the Prophet ﷺ was commanded only to preach on the concept of belief in one God. For 13 years. A person may be a non-Muslim and he does it in one day and it's finished. And that is his. You have learned about one God. No, it's not that. Not so simple. Simply to believe in one God, but now you have to learn about this God that you believe in. This Allah that you believe in, who is this Allah? Is this Allah some image? Is this Allah someone that you have seen in a picture? Is this Allah the same people, the same one that other people call by different names? And you bring in your mind whenever you say Allah, you think because of the religion you practice before, you begin to bring those same images and pictures in your mind about God Almighty. 
Is this it? People do that. People do that. So this is why it is important that Allah revealed an ayah. And what did he say in that ayah? He said to the Prophet wasallam, revealing to whole mankind, but addressing it to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim Allah says, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, aminu billah. All those who believe, believe in Allah. It seems strange. Allah is telling you, all oh, those who believe, the mere fact that He is addressing you as all oh, those who believe means you believed already. That's the only time you can qualify to be Alladina Amanu. Because He's addressing. Allah gives two types of address in the Holy Quran. He says, Ya ayyuhalladina amanu, O oh, those who believe. And he also says, Ya ayyuhannas, O oh, mankind. And sometimes he says, Ya bani Adama, O oh, children of Adam, say mankind. But alladina amanu refer to those people who already believe in Allah. And they already accept Allah as one. And ya ayyuhal nas, O mankind, it, it, it addresses everybody. Those who are unbelievers, those who are non-Muslims, those who believe in that and the other thing. But they are not Muslims. They are ayyuhal nas, O mankind. Allah is speaking to everybody. But in this ayah, Allah is giving us an instruction. The instruction that Allah is given is Aminu Billah, you believe in Allah. And to whom is this address being given? To those who already believe in Allah. So Allah says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhalladina amanu, oh those who believe, Allah is speaking to you and I. We are Alladina Amanu. And then what does Allah say? Aminu Billah, you believe in Allah. Now believe in Allah. You have believed in Allah, but it doesn't stop there. Now you need to put faith in Allah. Now you need to put reliance on Allah. Now you need to put trust in Allah. Now you need to learn who is this Allah. Who is Allah? You believe in one, but who is your creator? You believe in one, but do you have another one who sustains you? Who is a sustainer? Do you believe there is one God who gives life and there is another God who takes life? Who is the one who sends the rain? Who is the one who causes you to grow until you reach the state of maturity? Who is that one? Allah says, yes, you believe in one Allah, but now you need to know Allah. Subhanallah. You need to recognize who Allah is. Aminu billah. Believe in Allah. And also believe wa rasulihi and believe in his messenger. Okay, you have said, Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh when you accepted Islam. And we always say it, subhanAllah. Muslims always say it. What it is? I testify that there is no one worthy of worship except Allah. I testify there is no other God except Allah. And I testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the messenger and the servant of Allah. But that is, is that all you know about the Prophet? He is a Prophet? Is that all you know about Muhammad? Who is Muhammad? Who is this great Prophet who is the most beloved of Allah? Who is this person who is known to be the greatest prophet ever sent on the face of the earth? As a Muslim, the question is, how much do you know about this prophet? And if you don't know and we don't know about our prophet, then we are not able to follow him. How can you follow someone if you don't know him? And it is imperative and compulsory upon us that Allah orders us in the Quran that besides obedience to Allah, you must give obedience to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But if you do not know Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how can you follow him? And so many Muslims live in total jahalat and ignorance. Ignorant about who Allah is. Ignorant about who Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is. So their life is empty from worshipping Allah as he ought to be worshipped. And their lives are empty 
of any resemblance and connection to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Their speech it's like the unbelievers. Their look is like the unbelievers. Their dress is like the unbelievers. Their eats are just like the unbelievers. Their drinks just like the unbelievers. Their likes just like the unbelievers. Their fashions just like the unbelievers. What resemblance do they have to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam? On the day of judgment in the hadith recorded by Imam Bukhari alayhi rahma on the day of judgment the only prophet from among 124,000 prophets approximately only one prophet will be given the permission by Allah to intercede for the whole of mankind from the time of Adam alayhi salam until the last man who comes on the face of the earth until the day of judgment no other prophet except the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam will be allowed to do that allah will grant him allah will grant him that permission he alone was given that and he will intercede for mankind and then he will intercede in fact as a prophet he will be doing eight different types of intercession he will be interceding specially for his followers also it is stated in the authentic tradition that when the Prophet ﷺ will come among people and his followers will recognize him as their Prophet. And they will run towards him to meet their Prophet. Who wouldn't like to meet their Prophet? Day and night we are talking about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Day and night we are talking about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We send the rood upon him. We send salawat and salam upon him. Our, our, our lifestyle is supposed to be like that. And we try to live the lifestyle. And this is the opportunity you are getting to see the one that you love so much. Allahu Akbar. And this is the opportunity you will get to meet your Nabi. Allahu Akbar. Your mentor, your guide. So the believers will rush towards him. They will run towards him to meet him. But as soon as they are running, the angels, as a hadith recorded by Imam Bukhari, alayhi rahmah, they will put a huge wall and barrier between them and between the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam will say to the angels, they will say, Usay habi, Usay habi, leave my followers. Why are you blocking my followers from meeting me today? Let me meet my followers, subhanallah. Let them come to me. And then the angels will begin to describe to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam what these people did. They will say, oh Prophet, oh Rasulullah, yes they are followers, but do you know what they did? Do you know what they did as Muslims? And they will begin to mention what they did in their lives. What type of lives they live. What they did in their life. And after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would hear how these people lived their lives as Muslims. Who were his followers. He himself will say, Suhqan, suhqan li ashabin nar. Get them away, get them away to the fire of hell. This was the only last resort Muslims would have had on the day of judgment. To get their Prophet to intercede for them. To beg him and say, O oh Prophet of Allah, please go to Allah and beg Allah to forgive us, which he will do for many. But in this case, when he would hear what Muslims have done with his deen, with his religion, the religion that he fought for, the religion that he spilled his blood for, the religion that he gave his sweat for, the religion that made him uncomfortable day and night, he gave everything to build this beautiful religion, this beautiful garden that is called Islam. How we, when he would hear what Muslims did to it, he will say, I don't want to see them, in other words, get them to the fire of hell. Subhanallah. So, therefore, the, the thing, the question, the topic we were discussing is how much as Muslims do we really know about our Prophet? How much do we know of his teachings that he gave for us? And gave to us the teachings that will guide us on the path of success and salvation and will make us the best of people on the face of the earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat linnas, so Muslims, you are, you are the best of all people taken for the guidance of mankind. But why are we the worst people? Why are we kicked from pillar to post? When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prepared the group of the Sahabas, people who were living in poverty, 
that the only thing they had in their lives was one sheet of cloth to cover their body. Subhanallah. When they would perform salat, if they pull it to cover the upper body, the lower body will be exposed. If they use it as a lungi and a waist cloth to cover the lower body, the entire chest will be exposed. Subhanallah. That was all they had to perform salat. Allah. They had no food to eat, they will take the green leaves and soak it in water and eat it. Allahu Akbar. They lived in poverty. They grew in poverty. But their lives were for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They strove hard for the protection and preservation and propagation of deen. Allah blessed them. Allah blessed them. And after the demise of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that same group of poor Muslims, needy Muslims, whom everybody used to look down upon, Allah made them rulers of the world. Allahu Akbar. The same Muslims, they what did what? Subhanallah, they took control of the Roman Empire. The same few Muslims. The same Muslims, the great superpowers at that time, they were the Roman Empire and the Persian Empire. So today you have two supreme power. They are called superpowers. So at that time, there were two superpowers also. The Roman Empire and the Persian Empire. And they will always fight each other. And while fighting each other, they will conquer all the smaller territories, territories around and they will enslave them. And they will rule them. They will rule, they would rule them. But while they will fight each other and conquer all the close by territories that they will be ruled under the Roman Empire, or they will be ruled under the Persian Empire. Nobody wanted to do anything with the Arabs. Because is, these people are uncivilized. <laughs> these people don't know anything. These people are like animals. These people live with the camels. They are desert people. They are uncivilized people. Because the way of the Arabs at that time is that they live, fought against each other. <laughs> and they survived in that manner. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Nahnu ummatun ummiya. We are a nation, we are unlettered, we don't know how to learn. We don't know how to read, we don't know how to write. We don't know how to do accounts. Nobody had, because they were not beneficial to anybody. The Arabs. They were very poor, they lived in poverty. Subhanallah. But that same group of people, when Allah honored them, they became the rulers of the Roman Empire. Allahu Akbar. They fought against the mighty Hirakal which is referred to sometimes in English as Hercules, but it's Hiraqal. They fought him and destroyed his empire and they ruled that empire. They fought against the Persians and they conquered the Persian empire, subhanallah. And they ruled there until today it is still on, on the Islamic rule, Allahu Akbar. And all the close by territories in whichever direction they went to, Read the history, it is the Muslims Allah granted honor. They ruled Spain, they ruled the entire African continent, they ruled China, and it went on and on and on. Subhanallah. Those were the same few people who were so poor that everybody looked down to. Subhanallah. They were inferior in the eyes of anybody. This is why, what does the ayah say? Qul Allahumma malik al mulk, tu'til mulk man he is, Allah say, Allah is the one who is the owner of the kingdom of the heavens and the earth. He gives power to whomsoever he wishes. And he seizes power from whomsoever he wishes. Subhanallah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the battle of Ahzab, when they had to dig the trench to protect themselves, because a handful of Muslims living in the city of Medina, all the unbelievers decided to attack them at once and destroy all of them. So therefore, they mustered a massive army of over 10,000 people. Every group, those Jews who lived in Medina and the Meccans, and they solicited support from all the nearby tribes, and they mustered a massive army called in Arabic the Ahzab. Surah Ahzab in the Quran was revealed about that called the confederates or the jamaats and groups. And actually, they started to approach the Muslims and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam learned in time that they are coming to finish the Muslims once and for all in the tiny city of Medina. 
The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam guarded the Sahabas. What should we do? We don't have enough men to fight. We don't have arms and ammunitions to defend ourselves. If they only attack Medina, they will kill out our old people, our children, our women. They will loot the city and they will go back. What should we do? The Sahaba said, Salman al-Farsi. Salman was from Persia. He said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, whenever we in Persia, we were afflicted with that, we used to dig a trench around our city, deep and wide, so they can't touch us. They can stand on the other side and shoot arrows, <laughs> but they can't cross. Their horses can't cross. The Prophet ﷺ said, that's what we're going to do. And then around the entire Medina, they divided it and each, peop each person had to dig. Night and day they worked, night and day. Even the Prophet ﷺ will get down into the trench, into the blood drain and dig with the pickaxe like a laborer. And one, one, one occasion, there was this huge stone and rock that was there. And all the companions tried to burst it with their pickaxe, but they couldn't do it. So they came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, we can't smash this stone up, this rock. It's too huge, it's too hard. You know, please help us. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam took out his kameez and his kurta. Bareback he went. He took the pickaxe, bismillah, and he struck it one time. And a nur and a light came out from that rock. Allahu Akbar. He struck it the second time, a light came out. He struck it for the third time, it smashed to pieces and he saw a light. And on all, each occasion, he says, I saw the throne, yani the bangles, you know, of the people of Yemen coming to you. I saw the bangles of Sham and Syria and all these territories ne nearby coming to you subhanallah in other words he was saying through that light i saw that allah will give you victory over these cliffs close by places so the sahaba started to talk about that and when they started to talk about that the unbelievers started to hear that and the unbelievers they started to say oh look at these poor people they don't even have enough clothing to wear they don't have food to eat they can't stand straight because they, they are undernourished and they are talking about ruling yemen and rule in Syria and rule in here. Look at them. But Allah revealed the ayah in the Quran. Say Allah is the owner of the universe and the kingdom of the heavens and the earth. He gives kingdom and authority to whomsoever he wishes. And he seizes it from whomsoever he wishes. And this is what Allah mentioned there. Yeah, the world saw it and they witnessed it. And subhanallah, Allah granted them power. So therefore, who was our prophet? Allahu Akbar. In this ayah, Allah is saying, Aminu billah, ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, O believers, get to know Allah. This is why the first surah in the Holy Quran tells us about Allah. You believe in Allah, but who is this Allah? Allah says in the Quran, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. This Allah that you are calling every day in your life, and this Allah that you know about, and this Allah who you believe in, who is this Allah? Rabbil Alameen. He is the Lord of all the worlds. He is the Lord of your worlds. Your world. He is the Lord of the world of the jinn. He is the Lord of the world of the insects. He is the Lord of the world of the fishes. He is Lord of the world of the birds. And each and every species lives in their own world. And there is this world and the world in the hereafter. Who is the Malik? Who is the king? Who is the Lord and the sustainer of all these worlds? Allah. He is the Allah that you are calling. Who is this Allah? Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. He is the most gracious and the most compassionate and the most merciful. If you can think about anybody who you will call, he is extremely compassionate and extremely merciful, then Allah is more than that. Subhanallah, while speaking about how compassionate Allah is, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, you will commit a sin and beg Allah for forgiveness and he will forgive you. And you will commit another sin and beg Allah for forgiveness and he will forgive you. And you will commit another sin and beg Allah and promise Allah you wouldn't do it again. You will break your promise and go back to him and he will forgive you. To the extent that you will become fed up committing the sin. You will become fed up calling his name. You will become fed up in breaking your promises. Allah will never ever become fed up in forgiving you again and again. Allahu Akbar. 
You see it with human beings, you live with your parents. You commit something wrong, your parents, you probably you are married or you are a big adult. Son or daughter, you commit a wrong, your parents become angry. They say, don't do that. You say, okay, I promise I won't do it. You do it again. <laughs> now they become more angry and say, but you told me you wouldn't do it and you did it again. Oh, they say, okay, I promise in the future. Then you did it for the third time. They say, no, 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 this can't work. Please find your own place. They kick you out from their house after three or four times. They can't deal with it. They can't tolerate your disobedience. Allah will tolerate your disobedience and give you chances again and again. And he will never ever kick you out from his kingdom. Allah. That's how merciful and compassionate Allah is. You for your whole life as long as you have breath. You commit sins day and night. Day and night. And after years of commit sins, you are tired of committing sins. How many people you meet who have changed their life, they say, but I fed up, live that life. <laughs> Just imagine they have done so many wrong that they become fed up living that type of life. I want to change my life. And when they are ready, Allah is ready. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allah didn't say to them, time has gone. <laughs> Allah is so merciful and compassionate. Subhanallah. They will continue. And this happens in our life. So, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. Get to know who is this Allah. Maliki Yawmideen. Allah is the master of the day of judgment. You are calling Allah's name today. You are calling Allah's name. Every time that you worship Him and, and you remember Him, you will die. You will go in the state of barzakh. You will go in your grave and remain there for a long while. Tomorrow you will be awakened with resurrection. And you will stand on a plane called the plane of Hashar. You will see millions and trillions of people. And there will be a king on that day to rule. Who will be that king? The same Allah you used to call on the face of the earth. If you remember him here, he will remember you there. Allahu Akbar. If you get to know him here, he will know you there. He will never ever desert you. Allahu Akbar. This is why such beautiful ayats, the Makki ayats, the ayats revealed in Makkah, subhanallah, Allah is describing himself to us that he just doesn't want us to know he is one. He wants us to know about him. The Quran says, He is Allah, besides whom there is no other God. He is one and one alone. He doesn't have a mother, he doesn't have a father, he doesn't have a son, he doesn't have a daughter, he doesn't have a partner. Allah doesn't, any, he doesn't need any help in running this universe. He doesn't need any help in feeding you. He doesn't need any help to give this whole world provisions. He's one and alone. Wahdahu la sharika la. Allahu Akbar. Alimul ghaybi wa shahada. He is the knower of the unseen. What you can see, Allah sees it. What you can't know, Allah knows it. Allah knows what you will think before you think it. Allah knows what will come in your heart before it can come in your heart. Allah knows your intention for next year before it can actually come. Because he's alimul ghaib, the known of the unseen. And what is open, he knows that. Wallahu alladhi la ilaha illahu. There is not a God but Allah. Al-Malik. القدوس السلام المؤمن المحيمن العزيز الجبار المتكبر الله أكبر. Allah describes himself to us in the Quran, so we will know who our Allah is, and when we know who our Allah is, so we will love Allah. You have a father, but if you know how kind your father is to you, you will begin to love him. Why isn't that so? You say, oh, my father provides every day for me. Every time I am sick, my father looks after me. My mother looks after me. By knowing who they are to you, you will develop more love. When we know Allah, we will love Allah more. Huh? Al-Malik al-Qudus. He is the king, the sovereign power. Al-Qudus, the holiest one. Al-Malik al-Qudus al-Salam. Free from defects, the source of all peace. You want peace in your life? Go to Allah. You want tranquility in your life? Go to Allah. You are having problems in your life. Troubles, anxiety, worries, night and day. Problem in the household. Problem with your children. Problem with family members. You want peace? Who is the source of all peace? Allah. 
Beautiful dua the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam taught us to say, "Allahumma anta salam wa min salam." Oh Allah, you are the source of all peace, and from you peace comes. Subhanallah. As salamul mu'min, he is the one who grants security and protection. We want protection and security. Who do we go to? Allah, because he's al mu'min, al muhaimin. Allah is the watcher over you. Allah watches you. Allah looks, He sees Al Muhaymin. So He is Al Malik Al Qudus Al Salam Al Mu'min Al Muhaymin Al Aziz Al Jabbar Al Mutakabir. Allah is the Almighty, mighty and powerful. Allah is the Compeller. He can force you to do something. He has such control, He will force things upon you, and you have no way to get out of that. So you don't want to die. You say, I don't want to die. You see the angel of death and you say, I don't want to die. The angel, Allah says, you have to die. You can't evade that. Allah will compel the angel to take your life. He will compel the soul to emit your body. Allah can do that. Who wants to become sick? Nobody. But Allah is compeller. Whatever he decides would happen and nobody can stop that. And in these ayats of the Holy Quran, it ends after describing who Allah is. The compeller, the mighty, al mutakabbir the supreme one. Supreme being in the heavens and the earth. At the end, the ayah, beautiful ayah of Surah Hashar ends. Yusabbihu lahu ma fi samawati wal, wal ard. Every single thing in the heavens and the earth, they all praise Allah and they glorify Allah. That, you know what the ayah is telling us? Every living creature in the heavens and the earth recognize who this Allah is. The birds recognize Allah. The insects recognize Allah. The animals recognize Allah. The jinns recognize Allah. And we believers, to a greater extent, we have to recognize Allah. And we have to praise Him and glorify Him. So such ayats have been revealed so that we will know who Allah is. And when we know who Allah is, then our belief will be different. You know, there is a person who says, yeah, I believe in Allah, but, but he doesn't know who is this Allah. He doesn't know Allah is his Raziq. He doesn't know Allah is his Khalik, the creator. Allah is the nourisher. Allah is the sustainer. He doesn't know, but he says, oh yeah, I believe in Allah. But, and the more we get to know Allah, is the more we will love Allah, and the more obedient we will be to Allah. And when we become like that, then, as the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, when you are mindful of Allah, Allah will be mindful of you. And when you are mindful of Allah, you will find Allah in front of you. Meaning that when you become son who will, such person who will recognize Allah, know Allah, then when you call on Allah, Allah will be there for you. Allahu Akbar. Allah's help because you know who you are calling. Allahu Akbar. When you worship Allah, you know who you are worshiping. You will know who is this Allah you are worshipping. And that is why Allah wants us to do that in the Quran. So he says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu. Or those who believe, Aminu billah. O believers, you believe in Allah. Put your faith and trust. Know Allah and believe in Allah as he ought to be believed in. And in this way, inshaAllah, the way, the approach we have about everything, the conduct, we have as our Muslims, everything would change. Why? Because our understanding of Allah, our understanding of religion will be different. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the knowledge of these things and give us the perfect understanding of these matters.